Okay, guys, welcome back. Okay, so we are done with the poems now. You would have done all 12 poems up until now. I'm pretty sure you are very glad that we have gone through all of them. Um, I will still make videos of the ones that we did in class, those six that we did last term. I will make videos of that as well, but I first want to finish the store short stories before I recap on that for you. Um, I did not include the answers to the questions. Please still complete all the questions of the poems that we've already done and then all the short stories that we are going to do up until the end now um, so that when we get into class we can discuss only the answers to those questions. But please, please, please complete them before school starts again. Then we can just go on with them when school starts. Okay, so we are going to start with the short stories now. So you will see I've put the slides together so that there is a page that um, I took a photo of the page in the book, the actual short story, page one. And then um, this next slide gives a discussion on that page so that you can just relay the pages to one another. And as you go through the slideshow that you know the, where the analysis comes in. Okay, these stories are really, really very nice, very applicable to you guys, very cute, um, really fun short stories to do. I actually prefer them to the poems that you've done so far. Okay, so let's just first look at the title of this short story, or first short story, and that is Aspusterki en die drie biere. Okay, so... Automatically, we know that this is a, a fairy tale or based on a fairy tale. And in this case, there's two fairy tales that they've combined to actually um, write the title of the, <coughs> sorry about that, of the short story. So there is actually other uh, Disney movies that they also, or Disney stories that they actually also refer to in the short story itself, but these two are very prominent in the whole story if you take the story together. So firstly is Aspusterki, which is Cinderella, and then the three bears is obviously Goldilocks and the three bears that they are referring to. So they took the two titles of those two children's stories and put them together so hopefully you understand that so let's start reading i'm going to read the first page and then do the analysis of please follow as we go along you can follow on the screen um so that you know what i am reading okay so aspusterki en die drie bere van ochend to tries bel om te sê daar so waar drie van hulle Het ek haar nie gegloe nie, maar nou sien ek self. Dis rechtig waar. Skuif op, ek wil ook sien, sê Vanessa en wirm haar self tussen my en Dries in. Dis die december vakantie en ons staan op die balkon voor Dries se kamer en kyk af na hulle nieuwe bure. Flip, maar jy is gelukkig. Ons bure is allemaal ou mense, sê Vanessa en sig. As of sy rede het om te sig, sy woon in die selfde liekste sekuriteitskompleks as Dries hulle. En nes die ander mense in Glenhaven, rai haar ouwers ook elkeen een hengse slapkaart en hou hulle elke jaar vakantie op een ander eiland. Kyk net hulle maagspiere, jy kan tjokle daar teen raspe, sê Dries. Dries is mal oorkos, as sy nie bezig is oorkos, om te eet nie, maak sy kos of praat sy oor kos. Ek weet jylle, hylle oefen elke dag, sê Vanessa. Sy boer in die komplekse gym. As die fietse in die gym rechtig kon rui, so sy al recht rondom die wereld gejaag het. Weet jy al wat hylle name is? Vraag ek vir Dries. Rousie sê hylle name is Graham, Grant en Gareth. Rousie, Dries hulle sy huis op, weet alles van Amal in die kompleks. Sy weet ook alles van ons te. Ons het vroeger voor haar groot geword. Wel, kom ons gaan ontmoet die angst, stel ek voor. 
Die rest van die vakantie lyk al hoe meer belovend. Oké, okay, so we have met three characters up until now. We've met Therese, we've met Vanessa, and we've also met the um, storyteller. Okay, so Therese is um, a typical girl that loves food. So she loves making food, she loves eating food, and she loves talking about food. Then there is Vanessa. Okay, so Vanessa, they say, uh, say Vira myself, this and that. So these three girls are on the balcony um, staring at the neighbors. Okay, to see who the new neighbors is. Because there's new neighbors who've moved in. And these three friends are now looking over the fence to the neighbors. And Vanessa comes and she like wiggles herself in between trees and the storyteller. So wiggling herself in between them tells us that she has quite childish uh, characteristics. Not childish in a bad way as in childish um, she's pretending to be a child. No, it's just a childlike uh, physical feature that she has. Vanessa is also very fit because it says in the piece that she loves going to the gym. If the bikes in the gym were, could actually move forward, she would have gone around the world by now. So she is constantly in the gym. She's obviously got a very nice body. Um, and she's very health conscious. And if you look at Tris and Vanessa, they are quite opposite to girls. Vanessa, very healthy, very active. Tris likes food, rather eats than gets into the gym. Okay, so the time that we are looking at is they are busy in their December holiday, December vacancy, and they have nothing to do, so obviously they're spying on the neighbors. Okay, the, these neighbors that they're looking at is obviously very attractive. Okay, we can see that because the storyteller actually compares her neighbors and she says her neighbors are so old. Oh, no, sorry, it's not the, the storyteller, Vanessa. She says that her neighbors, it's so unfair that she has such attractive neighbors, her neighbors is so old. So obviously the it's compared to her neighbors who are old, so these neighbors are quite good looking. We don't know what they look like yet or who they are. Okay, so they are, it seems like all three of them are very wealthy. Okay, so they have Lixa Muertes, very fancy cars. Um, they live in a secured complex, so it's like one of those estates. Slapkar means that they drive very sporty, nice cars, and they go on holiday to different islands every year. So we can see these families are quite wealthy, and now it seems like all three of them have this nice um, uh, place that they live in. But we also see that the storyteller says that she doesn't know why Vanessa is actually complaining about her neighbors when she's also living in this very grand place. So maybe we can yeah already see that the storyteller is not as wealthy as the rest of the two girls. Okay, so pretty clear, very nice beginning to a story. Okay, so um Okay, so Rosie is Teresa's uh, maid, a house uh, worker, and she's a typical nosy houseworker. You know, when we when you're in these complex, all the uh, maids come together and they talk to one another and they discuss one another. So they normally know everything, and so. Um, the storyteller asks Tris what is these men's name, the boys that live next door, what is their names? And Rosie actually told her, Rosie, who is the help. Okay, so that we learn that the three guys' names are Graham, Grant, and Gareth. Okay, so we also learn that the storyteller is quite confident because she's the one who says, you know what, let's go over and meet these guys. The other two still talking about them, spying on them and so on. She says, let's go over and meet them. So I'm assuming that the guys look more or less something like this. Okay, very attractive guys, 
that are swimming next door. Cool. So let's read what happens next. Ons kan verhalen van die koekvat wat ek van ochend gebak het, sê Dries. Of ons kan hulle van die gym gaan vertel, sê Vanessa. Of ons kan hulle vraag of hulle nie my blauwe bikini daar ewers gesien het nie, sê ek. Dries hulle was vriende met die mense wat eers langs aan gewoon het. En ons het een paar keer daar gaan swem. Ek is seker ek het my bikini daar vergeet. Hou op worry oor die ding en kom vir jou aan die een, sê Vanessa. Ek vererg my somme. Die ding het amper soveel gekost as wat ek in een maand by die restaurant verdien. Lyk ek dalk vir jou soos een van die heel ten erf genome, vraag ek vies. Rousie sê, die ouwers gaan volgende jaar ook Noordkop hoerskool toe, sê Dries vinnig. Sy keer altyd as ek en Vanessa mekaar aanvat. Ek zoom weer in op die ouwers, ouwens langsam. Die drie is besig om my die swembad te klim. Brees skouwers en breeg glimlach, maal drie. Misschien moet ek een bykie met hulle flirt. Nou kyk, flirt is my specialiteit. Ek glo nie daaraan om ernstig te raak nie. Ek laat nie my hart breek nie, dankie. Dit het ek al vir myself uitgewerkt toe ek tien was en my paase landruiver vir die eerste keer by ons hek uitgerei het. Ek haal my sonbril af en skit my hare oor my skouwers. Nou ja, waarvoor wacht ons? Tries gaan haal die koek in die kombuis. Toe ons by die swembad kom, is hank nummer 1 besig om vir om vruchte sap in te gooi. Hank nummer 2 leent jy nie meer met een glas in die hand. En nummer 3 le uitgestrek op die sonstoel. Hy kom reg op toe ons nader stap. Hallo, ons het net kom kennis maak, sê ek. Ek steek my hand uit, terwyl ek na die hank op die stoel stap. Kei. Oeh, sorry. So she also, the family drives a Land Rover. And a Land Rover is not a cheap car, so we can see that this is also quite an expensive car. So she's not poor but she's maybe not as wealthy as the other two three friends. For the first time, we know what the boys are doing. So the first one is drinking juice, orange juice. The second one is leaning against the wall, drinking juice. And the other one is sunbathing in the sun. And now they're going to approach these boys. Okay, let's continue reading. Net toe haak my plakkie aan die ongelijke sierstien op die patio vast. Ek vlieg voor en toe en slaan my sonstoel neer. Dit neem een sekonde of twee voor ek besef dat ek boe op die ou le en soos een idee wit in sy oor staar. Achter my proes Vanessa asof dit die grap van die jaar is. Is jy ok? Vraat Tris, maar haar, maar... Maar ek hoor haar skaars. Sy oe is groen met blauw spikkels daarin. Of is dit blauw met groen spikkels? Dit is nou wel lekker om jou om so op jou te le, maar miskien moet ons die een of ander tyd opstaan, vluister hy. Ek voel hoe my gezicht vlam vat. Flip, ek haar het as ek so bloos. Ek sal my nou vinnig uit die moeilikheid moet praat. Ek druk met my hand tegen sy klamboors en kom recht op. Sorry, ek het nie bedoel om jou voete onder jou uit te slaan nie, sê ek en glimlach koel. Ek is Korli en dis my vriendinne, Tries en Vanessa. Hallo Korli, dit was baie lak om jou te ontmoet, sê die glimlach in die sonstoel hank. Ek is Gareth en dis my broers, Graham en Grant. Ek het vir jylle koek gebring. Ek het gedink jylle is dalk lis, sê Tries en sit die koek op die stoeptafelkie neer. Lis lyk die ouwens beslis. Die een wat skynbaar grond is, 
kyk met groot oor na die koek, terwyl Graham met groot oor na Vanessa se bene staar. Kom so, dan gaan haal ons borkies, sê Grant vir Dries. Vruchte sap, sê Graham vir Vanessa se bene. Thanks, sê Vanessa en knip oog vir my. Het is duidelijk dat die ou se gestaar geniet. Bly jy hier langs aan? Vraag Gareth vir my. Nee, dit is drie sylle se huis. Maar ek en Vanessa woon ook hier in Glenhaven. Net hier om die hoek, nabij. Vanessa se ma onthang oop. Ek kyk waarskiewend na haar. So the last two... On, so this slide and the next slide and the next uh, page is actually combined. Okay, so we this is the first indication of the fairy tale story. So she yeah relates the three brothers to the three bears. Okay, so she makes a comparison between Goldilocks and the three bears, the three bears in Goldilocks and the three bears. And these three brothers. Okay, she says that the one likes to prepare food and likes food. The other one likes the girls, um, well built girls, and the other one is quite um, self assured. Then it jumps to the next day. So there's a gap in the. There, you'll see the gap there. So this indicates a, a break to the next day because then the next sentence says the volgende dag. Okay, so it's the next day. And uh, Corley is still very worried about her bikini and she really wants it back. So she thinks, okay, I'm going to go across and go and see if it's in their house. So she first rings the bell, no one answers and she goes in. And she sees how well they've done the place. So there's a little mini bar. There are couches in this place. Obviously a little larpa or something similar by the pool. And she enters and takes a look around. Okay. This is my blue bikini. The blue material is sy sag under my fingers. As I did on it. Laat het my altyd voel of ek onder een palmboom op exotiese eiland sit en drankies met sambreelkies daarin drink. Ek is nogal dors. Daar is sekerlik iets koud in die ijskas. Die ijskas die is vol eetgoed en drankgoed. Ek haal van die soutapjes uit. Hulle sal dit toch nie mis nie. Ook nie een van die blikkie skoelrank nie. Ek loer dier die venster. Buiten is alles stil. My hart loop vinnig. Dit voel asof ek een spioen in een flik is. Ek strak my op die rustbank uit. Oh, dis moes hoe die lewe moet wees. Ek gaap. Ons het tot van oog in drie uur die videos gekyk. As ek my oor net vir een minuut toemaak. Net. Iemand het my kas gekrap. Iemand het my koos geëet. Ewers dis in die slaapnevel, dier hoor ek die stem. Ek maak my oor, ek moe maak my een oog oop. En van die de beer broers, kyk vir my. Iemand le op my bank en slaap. Aha, dis gouwe lokies. Ek vee a haar slierte uit my gezicht en sit raag op. Jy is nie snaaks nie oor. Ek kyk fronsend na die hank voor my. Wie van die drie is jy? Graham, weet jy gehoor is dit? Niemand. Sy oor lyk Nes Garthsen. Gaan ons swem, gouwe lokies. Hy beduie na die blau bikini langs my op die bank. Ek het my bikini kom soek. Ek het dit in die kas vergeet. Ons het altyd hier kom swem voordat jylle hier ingedraak het. Okay, so a bit of an awkward moment that she goes through. Um, she drank cool drink that was in this 
LARPA and ate some of their food and then fell asleep on the couch, much like the story of Goldilocks. And when he comes in, he actually, when one of the boys comes in, he actually um, quotes from uh, the Goldilocks and the three bears and he says, Iemand het in my kas gekrap, iemand het my kos geëet. So someone was here, someone ate my food, and oh my word, someone sleeping on my couch. Quotes from Goldilocks and the Three Bears. And then he actually calls Corley um, Gowelokis, uh, Goldilocks. And he asks her if she can go and swim. So she also, because they look quite a lot the same, as I said in the previous page, she says, how does your mother even recognize who's who in your uh, out of the three of you, so she didn't recognize either, but she could see that maybe it was Garth, but obviously she doesn't want to embarrass herself, so she asked, and he said he is um, Graham, but he, because he is quite self-confident, he says, well, who did you want it to be, because he actually knows that she has a thing for him. Sorry, I just want to get to the page. Okay. Ons twee kan dit nog altijd doen. Ek was nog nooit saam met gouwe lokies in die swembad nie. In jou drome. Of talke volgende keer gouwe lokies, sê Graham en draai om. Toe sien ek dit. Achter op sy teeheemd is die woorde, no one is perfect, but some of us are closer than others. Gareth, hy draai om. A groot grinnik op sy bakkies. Uitgevang. Jy is goed weer. Ek grijp my plakkies en gooi dit in sy richting. Dit tref die deur toe. Ek hoor hoe hy buiten lag. Net daar besluit ek. Die de beer broers is nie vir my nie. Vooral nie hier die wind gaat jy nie. Daar die vrijdag aand stotter Kalinkie by Maase Kar wat saam met, die, saam met Noog sy ark gekom het, toe ons voor die restaurant stil hou. Wat is fout? Vraag ek terwijl ek die deur oopmaak. Nou, ek weet nie. Kort sekere diens, sê ma en vee oor haar oor. Sy werk bedags in die pokereerskantoor en doen in die aand extra tik werk. As ma vroeg wil slaap, kan ek een lift soek by een van die ander weiters, sê ek sag. Sy glimlach. Dankie. Maar ek het nog baie werk om te doen, om klaar te maak. Sien jou 12 uur. Ons raak vroeg aand al bezig. Dis goed so. Ek kan doen met die extra tips. Dan staan hulle voor my. Eers sien ek net vir kuste. Een meisie in ons klas, wat Cruella de Vil na een fairy godmother laat lyk. Hoi gauwe lokies klink die stem skuins achter haar. Ok, so, um, Graham uh, invites Corley to go and swim with him, but she's still not sure that it is actually Graham. And, to he, and when he turned around, walked away, she saw the saying on his shirt that says, no one is perfect, but some of us are closer than others. And she knows from his previous shirt that um, Goth wore that he wears stuff like that. So then she immediately knew that it was him. He was very surprised and said, well, well done. Um, and now we also see in the break in the page there, we also see it's the next day. And they're driving in an old broken down car. So yeah, we realize, okay, she's not as wealthy as the other two friends. Because the car's old. So it's, it's van Noah's Ark. So Noah's Ark. So it's obviously a very old car. Then she refers to getting tips. They're getting busy in the restaurant and she gets tips. So yeah, we can see that she is a waitress. While she's in the restaurant, we meet another character called Kirsten. She's obviously not a very nice person because she compares her to Cruella de Vil, another 
fairy tale story that they bring in, 101 Dalmatian, and she says that she is like Coralla de Vol. She goes to school with her, and obviously they don't get along very well. And then she is somebody that refers to her as Goldilocks, Hawalokis, and she immediately realizes that Garth is actually with Kirsten, and they have come to the restaurant where she is. Okay. Die lichlim op Garth se roosbruin hare. Hy like baie sexy in sy jeans en sê groen die heen. Die spijskaarde glij amper uit haar hand uit. Maar ek glimlach koe. Welkom by Fasto's. Rook of nie rook? Net daar begin my ergste nachtmerrie. Op laarskool het Kirsten Vitres geboelie, tot ek haar eendag vastgevat het en Vanessa kouig om in haar haare gedruk het. Van toe af is Kirsten ons grootste vijand. En vanavond kry, ek, kry sy my terug vir daar die pink gauw kouig om in haar haare. Goed by my. Eerst bring ek kastig die verkeerde milkshake. Jy het een arbeid milkshake bestel, Kirsten, sê ek. Nee, ek het een chocolade een gevra. Sê sy en kyk rond. Dalk moet ons die bestuurde roep om die probleem by jy te sorteer. Dis ok, ek sal die chocolade een gaan al, sê ek vinnig. Ek kan dit nie bekostig om, die bestuurde, om in die bestuurders die slechte boekies te kom nie. Toe ek hulle kos bring, steek steek sy met haar stuik met haar mes se bin. Uh, dis rau, maar laat hulle dit gaarder maak. Gareth leen voor en toe, is jy seker? Dit lyk vir my lekker. Kirsten pruil haar rooi lippe. Corlie sal nie omgeen nie. Sy weet ons kan vir haar een lekker vet tip gee. En shame. Sy het dit genuine nodig. Die bloed in my aarde word net so warm soos my gezicht. Ek grijp die boord en masseer kom buis toe. Minute later smuit ek die boord voor haar neer. Dankie, hoor ek hoe Gareth onge ongemakkelijk achter my aan, roep toe ek, blazend van woede, reeds op pad is na een ander tafel toe. Uh, my lepel is vuil, sê Kirsten toe ek haar nagereg voor haar neersit. Ok, so, Kirsten is Corley's enemy, because Kirsten used to bully Tris, and then Corley stood up for her, and obviously Vanessa also stood up for her, and put gum in her hair, in Kirsten's hair. And since that day, Kirsten has been enemies with the three of them. And now, she sees the opportunity to get back at Corley for all these things that had happened to her. So firstly, she says that um, Corley bought the wrong milkshake to her. She ordered chocolate and Corley brought a uh, strawberry milkshake. And when her steak comes... Kirsten pokes it and says that it is raw. She must take it back. And right at the end, she says that the cutlery that she bought for her pudding is dirty. We see here uh, that Garth is quite ashamed of how Kirsten is treating Corley. So he tries and interjects and says, but the steak is not raw. The steak is fine. But um, yet Cor Kirsten says, no, she must fix it and she won't mind because she needs the tips because she is poor. Um, and obviously this makes Corley very, very upset. Okay. Ek blaas op die lepel en veer dit aan my jean af. Ek glimlach liefies. Peter? Kirsty maak haar mond oop, seker om die bestuurder te roep. Het is ook okay, keer gas. Hier is een lepel. Nog iets? Hou ek my aspris. Nee, dankie. Sê gas fronsend. Die volgende 10 minute ignoreer ek hulle soos stopstrand, totdat ek weer een keer by hulle verby loop. 
my foot on iets vastzak en ek met een gekletter van bekers, borde en glase neerslaan. Ek kan dit nie glo nie, nie twee keer in een week nie. Het jy seer gekry, kaas kneel by my. Sy oor is beslis blau met groen spikkels. Ek slik swaar, ek moet nou nie begin tjank nie. Ek staan op, my theehemd is vol knoffelsaus en een stuk plat gedrukte vis sit aan my jean vast. Vaag weg hoor ek al kaas sê, jou hand bloei. Al wat ek voor my sien is Kirsten sy smalendig glimlach. Dan is die bestuurder daar. Jy sal nie vanavond verder kan werk nie, sê hy terwyl hy na my hand kyk. Jy sal dalk moed steke kry. Kom, ek neem jou hospitaal toe. Ek kyk af na my hand. Gaas druk met een skoon servet daarop. Daar is rooi kolle op die servet. Toe maar, ek sal al vat, sê Gaas vir die bestuurder. Wat? Kirsten staar verbaas na Gaas. Ek sal een van my broers vraag om jou te kom al. Nee, nee, hy is toe te vat. Hy haal een beersie uit en sit een paar note op die tafel neer. Dit behoort genoeg te wees vir die rekening. Hy vat my aan die arm. Kom ons rui. Ek rem terug. Ek moet eers... Kijk, so... Goth just calms Kirsten down because she's complaining about the cutlery and says, you know what, you can use my spoon. You think yours is dirty. And then Kirsten for the rest of the night kind of ignores the two of them because she doesn't want to get into trouble. And then she just passes their table and Kirsten actually trips cordially. She falls, everything around her breaks, everything that she has in her hand and she cuts her hand open. The owner comes and says to her she can't work any further, She'll, he'll take her to the hospital. And then Garth comes to the, um, comes to her and says, is she all right? And he says to the owner, it's fine, I'll take her to the hospital. Obviously, Kirsten is very surprised and she asks, what is going on? You can't leave me on our date. And then he says, yes, he'll get one of her brothers to come and pick her up. Um, he's going to take her to the hospital. So it backfires on Kirsten a little bit. Moe nie bekommer bees nie. Ons sal opry, sê die bestede. Ek glimlach dapper der as wat ek voel. My hand is ok. Jy kan my maar net huis toe vat, sê ek vir Gaas. Eers toe ons in die kar sit, onthou ek van my liegstory oor Glenhaven. Terloops, ek woon nie in Glenhaven nie. Ons huis is hier nabij, Vennelstraat 9. Ek weet, Rousie gestel is vreselik lekker. O, ruk lang is dit stil in die kar. Kirsten is nie beindruk nie, sê ek. Dan. Wel, ek was ook nie beindruk met die manier waarop sy jou behandel het nie. Vooral nie toe sy jou gepoik het nie. Ek ruk amper my nek uit lid uit van verbazing. Wat? Sy het haar voet voor jou ingesteek. My bloedborrel so kwaad is ek. So ek koei, as ek haar in die hande kry. Sê my, hoe het jy aan haar gekom? Ons het van oogend in die naam in sy gym ontmoet. Ek het gedink sy is nice. Ek lig my wenkbrauwe tot amper in my haarwortels. Nice. Ek het een fout gemaakt. Ek hou voor, hy hou voor ons huis stil. My asem steek in my keel vast, toe ek voor oorleen om my krille oor my skouwer stoot. Ek dink al die hele week aan jou, gouwe lokies, sê hy. Hy laat dit soos een sprookies link. Nee, die ammer sprookies is nie waar nie. Ek is nie gauw lokies van Glenhave nie. Jou daar as spoesterkie, sonder een koets en glaskoene, sê ek. Hy leen nog nader. Dit maak die saak nie. En net daar, doe die de breer broer my soen, slaan die klok twaalf hier. En ek verander in een prinses. Ok, so... Orly, there, now we find out she does not live in Glenarvan. She does not live in the estate. She just lives in a normal house. Um, 
and yeah, we can see a lot of comparison between her and Cinderella, Aspusterki, that's in the title. Just like um, Aspusterki, Cinderella left her shoe for a prince to find. She left the bikini. Um, she's also less fortunate like Aspusterki. Um, she's not poor. She has a house and she, her mom has a car and a job and so on. But she is less fortunate. And then she says that the bell rings at 12 o'clock and she turns into a princess. Whereas Cinderella turns into herself. She turns into the princess. So it's just a play on words there. Because remember, her mom said 12 o'clock she will be home. Okay, he took her home. And then he kisses her and he admits to her that he thought that um, Kirsten is a nice girl. He met her at the gym, but he sees that they're not. Uh, he also admits that he knew that she wasn't part of the estate because of um, the help. Oh, what is her name? Uh. Why can't I find, find her name now? Rosie. Rosie. Rosie told him. He talks to Rosie. Remember, Rosie knows everything. So Rosie told her that she's not part of the estate. And that's not something that bothered her as, as well. So um, he still refers to her as Goldilocks. But she then refers to herself as Cinderella. Okay, so that is the story. Very easy to understand, very easy to follow. Please, um, if you can, make a summary of the characters in your workbooks. So you would write Corley, you would write um, Threes, and you would write um, Oh man, what is the other girl's name, Vanessa. Okay, so you can even draw pictures of them. Vanessa as a gym freak, trees liking food, and Corley, a very self assured girl. Um, you can make the comparison between Corley and Garth and Graham and Vanessa, and then. What's the other brother's name? Graham Goth Grant Grant and Trees. But they are the same. You can make that comparison. You can make a little chart. And then obviously of um, uh, Kirsten, who is like Cruella the Bull, and what she is like. So if you know the characters, it's easy to know the storyline as well and then as well the Rosie would also be one of the characters that you'll put there and then um Cordelie's mom who is also one of the characters that we get to know and what car she drives and where they stay okay so make character descriptions then it's easier to understand the actual story so please complete the questions in your workbook and make this um um, mind map for yourself so that you know what goes goes on as a summary and then complete the questions so that when school starts we can just go through the answers of the questions. Cool, thank you guys.